I wanted to talk today a little bit about underpainting and qualities of paint and qualities of white paint, believe it or not, more than anything. And so the first thing that I wanted to talk about was I've, I've been making these large scale paintings that are based on some smaller uh, versions of these paintings that are already sold. And um, because they sold so quickly, I thought, oh, you know, um, if I scale them up, maybe someone will be interested in buying a larger version that's a little bit more expensive. And uh, the problem with, with large paintings like this, 24 by 36, is that when you scale up past 18 by 24 in terms of size, the shipping goes up astronomically and so does the packing and the effort in packing. But that's another story. So the thing that I had to do in order to make these paintings, and so I'm gonna shift the camera a little bit. And some of the problems that I'm having with them is the smaller versions of those paintings were painted in a style that's called a la prima, which means that they were painted all in one, <clears throat> not sitting, but in, uh, in one session, which took me about eight hours to paint. Um, so the small versions that are 11 by 14 and, and 12 by 16, I could use uh, a quick a la prima method, which is basically smearing some burnt sienna and some walnut oil on the panel and then working with thicker kinds of paint. Now, with these larger versions, uh, they're actually uh, a two to three day process and, and part of what I need to do or think about when it's a two to three day process is I do, um, <clears throat> I have to do an underpainting first and let that dry. And sometimes on something this large, yeah, I can do an a la prima method and get it done in, in a day or two days, usually, you know, sometimes even in a day if I just start early in the morning and keep working till about six or seven at night. But in this instance, I thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll make all four or five of these small versions into large versions and I'll do underpainting. But what I started realizing, because I haven't used this method in a while and I haven't moved my studio down into the garage for a while, is that the kinds of paints that I use often affect what I'm able to do and often affect how thick or thin the paint can be even in the beginning coats. So in these paintings I'm kind of disappointed in the bottom levels of the painting, the amount of detail that I could get in there and how thick, thickly I could go. I couldn't do any thick paint. So when I repaint this, every inch of this surface is going to be recovered and it's going to be reworked completely. So some of the ideas that I, that I had in mind when I was doing that, I was like, ah, oh, well, this is kind of a, a, a pain that I have to do this. And I, it gave me this idea for talking about different kinds of white and different kinds of paint. So in the past, sometimes when I've been making paintings like this, I didn't use traditional oil paint. What I would do is I would get um, actually cans of oil-based paint called Rust-Oleum. And some of the paintings that I work on are literally five feet tall. So I would spend a day or so painting with this oil-based underpainting that's super strong and, and, and dries super fast and literally dries in two or three hours. But um, in these smaller uh, versions, which are 24 by 36 instead of um, you know 36 by 48 or five feet tall, I started using what's called Alkid, um, CAS Alkid paint. And the reason why I bring this up is um, I thought that this paint would be um, would dry super fast, but it's been around uh, <clears throat> 40 or 50 degrees in my studio the last week. And so this, the drying time has slowed down significantly. <clears throat> and the other thing that's going on uh, in terms of uh, how I've been working is I put down a coat of walnut oil and burnt sienna paint and then work with that. So what it got me really thinking about, oh, so this kind of paint, the way that it works, it's much more fluid. So I want to zoom in a little bit on the uh, surface of my palette and show you some things about how these different paints react and behave and talk about the kinds of whites of paint that I would like um, to uh, use. <clears throat> so the quality or consistency of paint 
really changes according to how it's mixed. So this paint called Alkid from a company called CAS, and I don't know what CAS stands for, uses petroleum products and mixes petroleum products in with possibly some linseed oil. And when you pull on the paint, see how it has a sort of long strand coming off of it, almost like spaghetti or something like that? That means that it's going to be much more fluid when you're using it on the painting. And it also won't stand up in peaks when it's applied. So all of the colors that I have mixed here for the flesh tones and for the background, if when I pull on them, they really are soupy and, and, and move around quite a bit. And they'll actually uh, sort of fall off almost like uh, <clears throat> syrupy in their, in their quality. However, traditional artist paint made like Utrecht uh, tube paint and Windsor and Newton, uh, the Wintons and so on and so forth, when you pull on them, they're really thick and, and they're more like a paste, uh, almost like a toothpaste, whereas this behaves more like shampoo or a thick soap in some ways. And that makes a big difference when you're painting. So one of the things that I think about when I'm working with um, the different kinds of whites, so I wanted to talk about two or three different kinds of whites. See how that's, that peak is just standing up? You can't do that with this. It falls back down again. So over the years, I've worked with several different whites, and so I want to talk about that. And I also want to talk about the differences of mixtures. So this is titanium white, which is a just titanium and some sort of medium. Sometimes they have mixtures of titanium and zinc mixed together, which is what most soft mixing white paints, which a lot of professional painters don't like to use because they feel like they're not uh, as professional or, or as good, but I think that they're great. And so in the beginning, when I started looking for a good white paint, I used a paint called Permelba, Permelba White. But what I noticed with Permelba White uh, was that sometimes it could literally get dried out and flake off. And I noticed when I was cleaning my palette, I didn't like how it was adhering to the palette and I didn't like how it was adhering to, to the canvases. And it felt very chalky and dried out very quickly. So I switched to uh, another uh, kind of paint, which, this, which I, is my favorite now, which is Windsor Newton Winton Oil Color Soft Mixing White which I really like its consistency and texture. And I use this paint quite a bit. Uh, I did try out um, Utrecht's version of this. Utrecht makes a version of Soft Mixing White, which is pretty good. Um, but I don't like it as much as I like this Windsor & Newton Soft Mixing White, which is my favorite. And I actually buy like 20 or 30 tubes of this at a pop, and it's usually about 10 bucks a pop to, to buy this paint. So the uh, next thing that I wanted to talk about was there's this really famous painter who I really like named Lucian Freud. And Lucian uh, used exclusively a paint called Kremnitz White. And Kremnitz White was this thick um, lead-based paint, which is super poisonous. And it goes on almost like, a, like it, it almost has a doughy quality to it, so thick. And so that's why his paintings have this sort of thick, crusty quality to them. And in fact, they uh, made the, that paint illegal in, um, in, in England, in the UK, and in Europe because it was so poisonous with all the lead in it. And he went around and lobbied and got it re-legalized. So those are some of the ideas about using different kinds of paint. And so the kinds of paint that I tend to use um, are, they tend to be around 10 to $15 a tube, and I tend to use something called hues uh, rather than pigments because they're a little bit cheaper in their chemical colors. And um, they run, uh, since they're so inexpensive, I can use a whole tube of paint on a small painting and not, not think or worry about it. So sometimes even my small panels can have like two, the equivalent of two or three tubes of paint, which is about $30 or $40 worth of paint, and then of course the surface. So I thought that I would just talk about those things today. Thank you.